don't. There it is. What's going on, everybody? Good evening. Uh, a couple announcements. It's gone. There it is. It's back. If y'all could, perfect. So, a couple announcements for y'all. First, baptisms happening November seventh and eighth. So, if you're interested in being baptized, let me know. We'll uh, we'll talk about that. What that looks like and how to get you into that, into the waters of baptism. Second, starting this, not this Sunday, but next Sunday, we're having Soccer Sunday, possibly Ultimate Frisbee, at 10.15 after service. So we have these fields. So Sunday, not this Sunday, next Sunday after service, we have a lot of soccer players. So we're going to have a couple soccer games going, possibly Ultimate Frisbee. Depends on the variety. There will be competitive field where you're playing for keeps. And then there will be the upward field for the rest of y'all. So I'll wear cleats, it'll be competitive, and then I'll be really tired. So there's that. Um, we have a quick discussion question for y'all. So look to your groups and discuss this. This will help with our, uh, our topic for today of context. Have you ever been in a conversation with someone and another person walks in at a really awkward time in the conversation? You know what I'm saying? Turn to the people next to you and talk about that. Or have you walked in on a conversation? That was weird. Three, two, one, great job. Really good. Who, be, great answers, everybody. Unless your answers were terrible, then you know who you are. Um, we. <laughs> context and how. Yes, can you throw the creed up there too real quick? I lied to you. The next slide says something about the Catholic Church. It says the Holy Catholic Church. And you may not know this, but we're not Catholic, right? And the Catholics may have, may have a lot of things right. They also have a lot of things wrong, just like all of us. But when we say this word Catholic, if you could throw that one Greek word up there for me. This is where the word Catholic comes from and why we continue to say it in our Apostles' Creed. Who thinks they can pronounce this word? Who thinks they got it? Anybody? Not Catholic. This is good. What? No. Nice try. So that little circle with a line through it is a T. Right? So it's Catholicos. Which sounds an awful lot like Catholic. You were close. So the idea of Catholicos is universal. 
It's everyone across the world who is a believer. So when we say the holy Catholic or the holy universal church, it's the whole church throughout the U.S., in the world, in the continent. It's everyone who believes in God. That's the universal, the Catholic church. So when we say the Apostles' Creed, we're not signing on to be Catholic and go to Mass now, but instead we're signing on to this, hey, we believe in the church at large, not just the church that's here in St. Peter's. And so today, Jaren and I are going to talk about how do we understand context in the Scripture, context for songs, context for everything. Because when we know context and we see it, we not only understand things, but we experience them more fully. So if you would, um, let's say the Apostles' Creed together with a better understanding of what Catholic means for us. So here we go, all together, because my voice talking is boring. So here we go. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. Page two. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the com- to the band. Come on up and lead us in worship. If you stand up with us as we begin. How are y'all doing today? You guys having a good night? Yeah? One person's having a good night. That's what I heard. Can you, are you guys having a good night? We, we doing okay? Good. Good to hear. Good to hear. We're going we're gonna to worship. We're going to join our voices together. We're going to praise him. And that's exciting, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> All creatures, all creatures of our God and King, lift up your voice and with us sing. Oh, praise Him, Hallelujah! Thou burning sun with golden beams, Thou silver moon with softer gleam. Oh, praise Him, oh, praise Him, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You see, now rushing, thou rushing when that art so strong. He clouds his sail in heaven along. Oh, praise him, hallelujah. He lights to lead me, find your voice. He lights to lead me, he lights to lead me, find your voice. Oh, praise him, oh, praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let all things that Creator bless and worship Him in humbleness. Oh, praise Him. Hallelujah! Praise, praise the Father, praise the Son, and praise the Spirit, three in one. 
in this evening. So like Matt was saying, our, our series that we're starting, where we started it last week, where we began to talk about the Bible, and last week we talked about how God reveals himself to us through scripture. This week we are talking about um, the fact that context in scripture and in our lives creates clarity for, for those around us, for, for our own minds, for our own hearts. And um, we're going to sing this new song, it's called New Wine, and you might be wondering why we're singing about wine in church or in youth group, especially when we're all young and all that stuff. But really, it's just this metaphor. And let me, let me read the scripture um, that, it, that it comes out of. This is Luke 5, 37. And this is Jesus talking. He says, no one puts new wine into old wine skins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins and it will spill and the skins will be ruined. But new wine should be put into fresh wine skins and no one after drinking old wine wants new because he says, the old is better. What exactly does this mean? Jesus was using this parable to illustrate how there's, there, there needs to be a new structure to hold his new teaching. The old ways couldn't integrate with the new teaching. We will always want to cling to the old. It's more familiar and it's more comfortable, but Jesus has something better. And in our lives, we are to take up our cross. We be, become a new creation in him. And to follow him with, with everything that we are and to leave our old selves behind in order to become the creation that he wants us to be. And that's what this, this song is about. It's about us, us dying to self and becoming something new in his creation. So would you sing with us?
vessel Make me an offering Make me whatever You want me to be But I came here with nothing But all you have given me Jesus ain't new wine Out of me Bring new wine out of me, oh Jesus, bring new wine out of me. Lord, I thank you for today, and I thank you for all the people that are here because they obviously love you. And thank you for having us have youth group through this hard time. I know through the pressing and the crushing, you're going to make something new out of all of us some new wine or anything. So I thank you for today and I thank you for everything you've given us. Amen. Amen. Band! Yeah, the band. Perfect. Is this mic consistent? I feel like it's fading in and out. Is it consistent? It's good. We're rolling. Hey, um, congrats. If you're watching online, what's up, dudes? Uh, we're rolling, right? We got online. We got a band. We got some space. We got couches. We have a good setup. Um, today, we're talking about how context creates clarity. And something that I get a little caught up in is I'm very much so a feeler, right? There are a lot of people who are super cognitive, and they think about all their things, and everything is laid out and simple like that. But for me, I'm a feeler. Right? And what we're talking about in the next couple weeks is very stuff. And something I pray, I've prayed for for hours this week alone is just that this stuff we talk about over the next couple weeks would move from our hearts. That we would have this things and it would move into our affections and stir us to glorify God. Like that's my hope and my desire as we dive into this stuff. Because it's kind of exciting. There's really cool things to learn. But it's very heady. And so I hope for most of us, we, we learn the goodness of God. We learn about context. We learn about the Bible. And that stirs our heart toward him. Right? So that's kind of an underlying tone I want us to have tonight. Um, we are talking about context. And there's no easy way to intro this. Right? We're about to watch Fuse News. And so uh, this is one of my favorite Fuse News we've ever done. So if you haven't seen it, Prepare to enjoy it. However, there's a mistake within this Fuse News. So, see if you can spot, Jaren and I didn't notice this until we were done with the video, but see if you can see. Also, just enjoy. I'm getting the thumbs ready. Sure, not yet. Happening. Just keep talking. You got it, man. It disappeared. Like Jesus when he ascended into heaven. Great. Am I supposed to stall, or do we got, you got it? Talking about explained, context creates clarity. I'm running 18 miles on Saturday. Anybody want to join? No? I got one, two. All right. Deal. All right, see you all at the Katy Trail, Pittman Hill. See you all there. That's all my stall tactics was that. How's that for youth ministry? What time? Irish wristwatch. I can't do it. Those are two things I struggle with when it comes to mumbling and uh, the amount of Irish. S sounds and stuff. Irish. Irish. Dude, that is tough. <laughs> I've never heard that one before. It's one of those. Irish wristwatch. Hey, try saying that five times fast right now. Irish wristwatch. Nice. I, can't do it. I cannot do it twice. <laughs> Say it twice. <laughs> Irish wristwatch, Irish wristwatch. Ooh. Five. <laughs> Welcome to Fuse News. How are you guys doing today? I hope this is not too loud. I'll cut that part out. We are killing it! <laughs> it's because we have a live studio audience today. That's what the issue is. We got Audrey in the back. What's up? <laughs> hey guys, unfortunately, Jaren couldn't make it today. It's been really devastating. Uh... Oh, wait! Gotcha! Here he is. Uh -huh. About to drop a rap album. This album that Jaren's about to drop is called Feelings on the Inside Hurt More Than Feelings on the Outside. I'm really excited for that album. This just in! You hear that too, Matt? <laughs> it's the call, it's the the alarm, the emergency broadcast network 
And then the bat light in the sky is going. The bat light in the sky is shining. It's we in must. My ear. <laughs> Our Woo! superhero, aka reporter in the field. We're gonna cut to him. Uh, he's gonna let you know what's going on. Hey there, you thick hype beasts. Pastor Terry here to bring you some dope information. Are you in sixth through eighth grade? Lit. 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 We have 6-8 Fusion on Sunday mornings, and we'd love to have you there for your part starting in October. And do you want your drip to be soaked in the waters of baptism? Well, we're having baptism classes on October 4th and 18th, and if you're interested in being baptized November 7th or 8th. And we're still gathering for Fuse on Wednesday nights, no cap. We look forward to seeing you there for hangout, worship, and small groups. Hey, stay fresh, Sims. Thanks, Terry, for your eloquent words. Um, beautiful, honestly. I teared up in the studio here. It's hard to follow. It's, it is hard to follow. Brought to you by our reporter in the field, Terry Sanderson. Also known, affectionately here, as Terror Bear. Before we leave, we do want to say RIP, Brad. Hey, but you know, actually, something that has to do with Brad and Terry is there's a deep dive on the Instagram at Calvary Online. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Got to check it out. Uh, they talked about what they talked about last week. I imagine they're going to do another one for these weeks. Dive in. We're going deep. Check in it out. Over our heads, we want to be caught in the rush. Lost in the, the flow. Lost in the flow. Yeah, yeah. And over our heads, we, we want to go. go. The river's deep. The river's wide. The river's water is alive. So sink or swim. I'm diving in. See you guys next week. Hey, stay fresh, Sims. <laughs> First off, amazing, right? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know where we can go from here, but that was my favorite filming and process of ever. None of that made sense. It was some... out through a couple different issues and there's two types of misunderstanding or things that cause two types of misunderstanding that can really affect our view of scripture and these are both lack of understanding and poor understanding or poor theology so there's lack of understanding where we surely don't know something and there's poor understanding when we just have a messed up view of things so we're going to fly through these, get through it. We're going to talk about lack of understanding first. And one of the ways in which we gain understanding of the scriptures is to see how they're written. So the Bible, there's this sweet flow chart that we've got for this. But the Bible, a couple different sections, right? There's the Old Testament and the New Testament. And with those, there's different kinds of writing in each text. So for example... A history book, or differently than I would read, I don't know what other kind of books there are, novels, whatever, right? Uh, I only ever read the Bible for like nine hours a day, right? Just like all of us. So in the Old Testament, there are four different sections, technically five, because they divided the prophets, but I don't really get why. Uh, there's the law, which is the first five books of the Old Testament. It's called the Pentateuch, written by Moses. 
It has the story of God creating the world and it, that starting of a relationship with Israel. There's the historical books, which is starts in Joshua and then goes through and losing all these kings that are mostly bad and the kingdom separating it, you know, whatever. We'll get there. There's the wisdom literature and then there's major or minor prophets. So the way you read wisdom literature than the way we read prophets. We just understand them differently. And in the same way, the New Testament is a little bit different, where there's Gospels in the church, which is the four Gospels, the Synoptics, and then John, and then Acts. Gospels in the church, then there's epistles, which are letters written by epistles, right? Paul, way to go, dog. Lots of writing. He did most of that. And then just the others. John, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, 1st, 2nd Peter, uh, Hebrews, by, what do you think, Dan, Apollos, maybe? We don't know, it doesn't matter. Uh, and, and then, and time of Revelation. So there's different scriptures, there's different types of writing, and when we understand what type of writing something is, it helps us put that in context and better understand it. We're going to take an, a, a look Well, there it is. We're going to read it, and we're going to be like, I don't really know what to do. This doesn't really push me toward God. And then hopefully after we digest it, we can see the beauty of this verse. So what it says is this. When you build a new house, make a parapet around your roof, so you may not bring the guilt of bloodshed on your house if someone falls from the roof. Right? Perfect. Everyone clear? We can move on. Right, what the heck is this talking about? Well, context helps bring clarity. Context creates clarity. And what is back in the day when Moses is writing this stuff, houses were much more square. Right? There are these square buildings, and it was in the Middle East, and so stuff gets hot. And then you have AC. Already a lot of things we don't recognize and don't deal with. So in the Middle East, in the summer, sometimes it was too hot to sleep inside your house. So people would go on the roof and sleep there. And a parapet was just a short little fence or wall around the edges of the roof. And this was created so that when people are sleeping on the roof, they don't, you know, sleepwalk or roll off the edge and die. Right? Like, solid rule. Great job, Moses. Not needlessly falling off the roof and dying is great. So already, a little bit more sense for this. What's a parapet? Parakeet? Just a different name? No, like we now understand a little bit more what a parapet is, but there's, there's more to it than that. There's this idea of the law that God has given us to the floor. The law is like the minimum level. So there's this idea of, hey, don't let people fall off your roof and die. <laughs> Great start, right? And then there's the six commandment that a lot of people attribute this and connect this to. Hey, don't kill people and don't die. Falling off roofs. While great, easy, right? I think we can accomplish that floor and that base. But from there, from the floor, we learn about God's character, of God values human life. He values his creation. He values others so much so that he's saying, do these things, go the extra mile to not cause harm. So we see not only the floor of don't kill people, don't let people get hurt on your land, care for creation, care for others. But then we see Jesus fulfilling the commandments, saying, love God and love people. So the floor is not killing people and not, you know, letting people die falling off your roof. And then the ceiling is loving people as, we're, as we love ourselves. There's a lot to move forward, right? There's something for us to see that God cares about others. He called us to care for others and go out of our way to serve each other well, right? Now that's beautiful. That shows us a, char a characteristic of God that can cause us to worship, that he values us enough to care for us and give us little ways to care for each other. Now that's different, right? None of us read that at first and we're like, I bet God really cares about me, right? But now we can kind of see that when we get context, 
we gain clarity and understanding of what the scripture is talking about. No, I wouldn't. That's a lot. That would take so long, eventually. But we can learn slowly together. So the first is a lack of understanding. There's no shame in that most of you didn't know what a parapet is, right? But when, when we have a lack of understanding, it can bring clarity to what the scripture is talking about. Second, second issue is poor understanding or poor theology. And there are I don't know about other churches in other countries, but in the U.S., we have butchered some verses, right? We have taken them to mean whatever we want them to mean, right? We take something that's, that it sounds good, and we're like, you know what? Jeremiah 29, 11, I'm going to Mizzou. What? That doesn't make any sense, right? I don't get it, but because some people speak eloquently or can commit to something, we can take things out of context and turn it into almost motivational speaking. And when we had that slide up there, none of the books of the Bible are motivational speaking books, right? They can be motivating, but that's not necessarily their purpose. So let's look at a verse that I think is just abused like crazy, right? Some of you may know this, Philippians 4.13. If you, I got a yoke, sweet. Maybe some of you are sinners like me. When, when I became a believer, I was in high school, and I read this verse, and I was like, through Christ, I'm going to be a state champion, for sure. Maybe some of you are musical and you're thinking, through Christ. I don't know what y'all do. Sing. Jaren, what, what would be like an award for music? I didn't hear any of that. A Grammy. Wow. Amen. A real high. I feel like that's way above state champ, but whatever. So, that is not what this verse is talking about. You know, spoiler warning. So, 4.13, I can do all this through And some of us, if we take that out, be like, I can do this. I can do whatever I want through Christ, right? Well, I can try really hard to have an NBA, and I Can you read this verse for us? Yeah, whole thing. Great job. Give, wow, hot mic. Give her a hand. Well done. And for us, for this verse, we don't have to know too much context to bring, bring clarity out of that. But we do learn that Paul's in jail when he's writing this. He's being persecuted for preaching and proclaiming the gospel. And when he's writing this, when we read verse 13, it's probably a better understanding of, I can endure all things through Christ. Right, like whether things are good, whether things are bad, whether I'm in jail or not, whether we're in a pandemic or not. Or a Grammy high school champ.
Heck yeah. Five essays. Here's the conclusion. We would love to talk to you about that. Jaron, myself, Pastor Dan, we would love to talk to you if you have a question about the word, right? Wrestle with it. Don't just move past things you don't understand. Wrestle with it. Bring other people into it with you, right? And the band is coming back up. Uh, I just have one more thing to say about like, when we wrestle with these things, that's how much it starts. Like, we wrestle with the Lord, so that's something where we move that head knowledge into this stirring heart. Where, wherever we're at, if we
What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name. excited to continue a conversation with you guys. Go ahead and go to your guys' small groups, leaders. It should be out there on that front desk thing.